Hello, folks, and welcome to the Know Better, Be Better podcast, a conversation about health and wellness where we explore various topics to increase our knowledge and understanding in order to grow holistically. I'm Darren Rayner. And I'm Danny Andreka, and we are here today talking about green exercise. Okay, so we're not talking about just any exercise, right? Oh, no. Green exercise, colorful exercise, very specifically the okay. color green. So Good stuff. When I think of the word green exercise, I think of a lot of our associations with go green and different types of things. So more yes. environmental based exercising. Would you say that? Yes. I think green also tends to make us think of healthy things. When we see things in stores, when we see products, we think, oh, that must be better for me. It's green. That makes sense. It must be more natural. It must be healthy. More natural. I like how you said that. <laughs> and that's exactly what's in our definition here. The term green exercise refers to exercise that is performed in natural environments. Yes. The great outdoors. Right. So it's well known that regular exercise itself can be helpful uh, to our psychological benefits mm -hmm. when also preventing and managing different types of pre-existing conditions. You know, a lot of people exercise to prevent type 2 diabetes, hypertension, blood pressure, you know, all these different types of things that they're looking to regulate or rid themselves of. Exercise is a medicine, right? Yes, absolutely. It's not just about your physique, right? We know that. We've discussed it. It is come, coming with a whole host of health benefits. So. Yeah. so I think when we look at the pandemic, right, since 2020, things have kind of just gone completely out of whack. Things went mm -hmm. uh, from what we would call normal to the new normal now. That's what we'll call it, right? Yeah. So when the lockdown happened, what happened? A lot of uh, sanitary and cleanliness type of practices increased. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I personally thought of was the gym. I was I would say I'm a gym rat. I'm not in the gym <laughs> for hours, but I would be in the gym every day. Yes. But it wasn't until the lockdown that I recognized there's a greater benefit to exercise than just moving, but it's also even about being in different locations and environments to help benefit us, right? Yes. I don't know about you. I also noticed how uh, unclean people are when they're at the gym. Mm-hmm. Not cleaning up after themselves. Yeah. And you're <laughs> 2020 turned me on to that. <laughs> you're surrounded by that. In a space where your heart rate is up, your pores are open, you're sweating, mm -hmm. you're exposing yourself to all kinds of things from infections to disease, viral diseases and things of that sort. And you're boxed in. Yes. Sometimes sunlight gets in through different windows and things like that, but you're essentially boxed into this, I hate to say it, but like a cesspool of, <laughs> of potential disease. It's not saying pe people are the disease, but it's cleanliness practices are not going well ventilation is not great. And a lot of times I think people find that the gym is not for them because of that exact reason. Yes. You know? And we're not telling you to go out and cancel your gym membership. Okay. Absolutely not. Gyms are a phenomenal place um, to help get healthier, um, to help increase your knowledge of exercise. There's great community that can be found at gyms. So don't make any rash decisions, mm -hmm. but we do want to talk about just another way to exercise, right? Being outside and what that can do for you. Yeah. It's, it's really the simplicity of all of that. We're trying to promote, not necessarily, we're, we're not really trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to go back to the way that things were. If you look at- The original wheel. The original wheel, right? <laughs> Humans uh, before were used to doing everything outdoors, right? A lot of the physical activity was an outdoor activity. Even, we talked about this before, when you look at kids, yes. right? When you were a kid, what did you do for recess? Did the teacher say, okay, recess time, find a ball and we're going to play in the classroom. No, <laughs> you grab your ball or you grab whatever you're going to do with, and you're going to go outside so you yes. can be out in the elements. So there's Sometimes a real benefit Sometimes even when it was raining. I remember yeah. being a kid and my mom always was telling me I had to bring my rain jacket because we were going to go outside for recess and we had to have it with us even yeah. if it was raining. Absolutely. So there's benefits to the original plan. Yes. Right. To being outdoors and having your activity to be outdoors. Exactly. So there is a few articles that kind of back this up. Uh, there's a research project that was happening in England back in 2005 where they explored the mental and physical health outcomes of green exercise. Right. So what happened is they would exercise for 20 minutes on a treadmill, but they were exposed to different types of projected scenes that fell within the different types of categories. There was mm -hmm. urban pleasant. There was um, rural pleasant and unpleasant. And then there were also uh, different types of areas that they looked at as well in terms of like nature from a uh, heavy green jungle perspective that I read, as well as going into a more 
as we talked about with the urban aspect of concrete jungle, as one would yes. say. Yeah. So what they reported was that there was a synergistic effect of exercise coupled with the exposure to more natural types of nature, right? Mm -hmm. So moreover, it also concluded that compared to exercise alone, green exercise was more impactful in terms of improving your cardiovascular and your mental health. Yes. And there has been a lot of research that's actually been done on this subject. But I think one of the interesting things to note from that is that there is a difference between indirect and direct exposure to the mm -hmm. outdoors when you're exercising. So in this particular study, they were looking at scenes, right? They were being shown a picture. They were being shown a film of being outside. So research has shown that that also has a dramatic, dramatic effect, um, almost as much as actually being outside. We do know, and research does show, that actually being outside is more beneficial to you while you're exercising. Um, but don't discount, you know, those bikes that have those fun video yeah. screens um, that may be really pricey, but they make you feel like you are in a legitimate jungle dirt biking. Um, there is something to that, and there is a reason they do exist. They can be really helpful. Absolutely, especially because we understand not everyone has a lot of time on their hands. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get up, you're active, you're working, you're working, you're working, and then by the time you know it, the day is over, um, especially in these winter months where the sun is not out as much and even nature is a little bit more gray. There's not as much green. Yes. You can supplement that with, like you said, these types of uh, fancy bikes or fancy treadmills <laughs> that will show your run route as though you're running through um, a forest or you're running on a hiking trail or yeah. something like that. Look it up on, on YouTube. Beach. Look up, you know, some different views of sunsets or of trails you know find something that brings you a little bit of joy that makes you excited that you can look at that kind of gets those endorphins up gets those mood boosting um, interactions kind of happening in your brain and it's even shown that you can literally just look outside <laughs> if you're inside mm -hmm. and that can have a massive mood boosting effect as well um, so maybe there's a really nice tree outside where you're running on your treadmill Let's do that. Let's look at that. Let's not turn our backs to the window. Let's maybe allow ourselves to face it as we're exercising and kind of soak up that extra benefit. Yeah, it's kind of like location is everything. Your physical location is important. If you mm -hmm. can be outside, be there. But your mental location is just as important. Absolutely. You know, putting yourself in a maybe in a mental environment where you're like, I am running on the beach or I am running out uh, on a nature trail or something like that. Yes. One thing that I note as well uh, Green exercise is not something new. It's just been given a label. Yes. But if you think about it, when you go to the gym, uh, New Year's, let's say, it's packed out. You can't, you can hardly get on equipment. You can mm -hmm. hardly do anything. But when it's July, you have an abundance of everything because people are doing other types of exercise. They're yes. not necessarily coming to the gym and being stuck in with everybody. A lot of times it's like, oh yeah, I do more yard work and landscaping, which is great exercise, you know, mm -hmm. or I find myself out, I practice running now, or I walk, different types of activities. Take my kids to the park. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing that that benefit has always been, they just gave it a label, green exercise. Right, absolutely. And we do know that there are a little bit more benefits to actually being outside than just viewing those pictures. So a couple of those things, right, fresh air. Fresh air is really big. And yeah. maybe you do live in a city, maybe you don't live in a place where there is non-existent pollution and you can just wander down the dirt road mm -hmm. <laughs> with an open sky and lots of trees. Um, that's okay. There is still a lot of benefit to being outdoors, breathing in that natural atmosphere, something that's not so filtered. Um, AC is not, you know, running. We don't have chemicals that are potentially in the air in our workspace. Um, if we work in a hospital, sometimes there are antibacterial components mm -hmm. that are at play there. And it's just a little bit less natural. Not that it's bad. Um, it's just not what your body was naturally used to when you were born. You yeah. know, that fresh air, that normal air. Um, and it's very, very calming for your nervous system as well. So that's a great reason to be outside. Yeah, and you, you, you look at us as people, we were designed to move. Mm -hmm. We were not meant to be sedentary, um, sitting on a couch and things like that. We were designed to move and more than anything, we were designed to contribute to nature as nature contributes to us. So you think of a simple aspect of we exhale carbon dioxide and the trees take that for their fuel and they give us oxygen for our fuel. So we were designed to interact with nature in yes. a way, you know? And there's, there's great benefits to that for us as well. I know for me personally, I can say that 
when I would eat dinner, this was especially uh, in the summer of 2020. After dinner, I would get up and I would go for a 30 minute walk. Mm -hmm. And just seeing how one, my digestion got much better. Wow. Um, you also, I mean, it does come down to what you eat too. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> you don't necessarily want to eat uh, your favorite fast food chain or binge on that. But it is a starting point if you decide that's what you're eating. You're going to get up and go for a walk. Somewhere is better than nowhere, mm -hmm. right? But finding that my digestion was a lot better, I was able to uh, find rest in the evening a lot better too because I would get myself active in order to start to metabolize and process uh, the food that I've eaten. And process your day. And really. process the day, exactly. Yeah. So when gyms shut down, a lot of us were forced into green exercise who desired to maintain a physically healthy lifestyle, right? Yes. And luckily at that point, it was already getting warmer outside. So I yeah. think people were bolstered in that. The fact that the weather was a little bit warmer, they felt more comfortable being outside. Um, and I think once we got to that very next winter is where we really started to see some struggle because maybe people weren't as comfortable going back into a gym. Mm -hmm. yet but it was cold outside and that took away some of your options in yeah. essence or at least a more comfortable option exactly so there's different types of strategies that we have um, to make green exercise simple and make green exercise understandable yeah right so it's not necessarily like you have to go outside and you have to go and do 50 push-ups or pull-ups or things like that but even let's take note of that when you go to parks a lot of parks have exercise stations now mm -hmm. right and a lot of them are becoming more high tech so that you almost have full weight lifting equipment. I saw of a, a park down in Florida where this health network, I think it's called Advent Health. They put together a, an elliptical machine in wow. the park they put to, and it's like a partnered elliptical. So when one partner moves one way, you move the other way and so on. So How it's pretty fun. Neat. Yeah. But basically taking the gym to the outdoors because they see the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. You need fresh air, you need sunlight, you need a breeze, you need, ventilation you need all of that type of stuff in order to uh, cultivate a healthier lifestyle which yeah. we see that exercise in the mind is totally linked together mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised how calm and how much better your mood is from being outdoors right yes absolutely well i love um we kind of made this point here in one of our strategies that we were designed to walk and to move on grass and dirt, you know, not pavement, not sidewalks, which those things are great to make it easier for people to get around. Certainly if you are biking or if you're less mobile, if you're in a wheelchair and you need to be on a more stable surface. But if you think about it from a muscular standpoint, you have all of these stabilizing muscles in your body that maybe aren't like the largest muscles, right? Maybe they're not your biceps. Maybe they're not your quadriceps that are very, very large prime movers, but you have all of these muscles that work to support you. And they tend to work better when they are constantly challenged with things like unstable surfaces. Mm. So it's nice to be able to walk through places that are grassy, that have dirt, that maybe aren't completely smooth. Sand is one of them. So if you've ever tried to exercise or run on sand, it is incredibly difficult. You tend to feel soreness in places you may have never known existed before. It's because those stabilizing muscles were finally being challenged. So it's a great way to help increase your stability and your balance as well, because you're letting those muscles do what they were designed to do. It's funny because you mentioned that point. Um, the wheel has been tried. They, they try to reinvent the wheel oftentimes. I was oh, yeah. scrolling on social media and I saw a, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like this toe spacer type either shoe, but it's more of like a actual just tiny instrument that you put on your foot mm. and it helps to space out the toes because you're sitting inside shoes all day that keep your feet constricted, yeah. right? But why, why spend, I mean... Why spend money on products that can just be used? Your product is the outdoors. Like you said, yeah. we talked about it before. I'm not a big fan of walking barefoot. Yes, right? I was going to say, says the man who <laughs> loves to wear shoes. Right, but <laughs> there are benefits to saying, I'm going to go out, I'm going to walk in the grass barefoot, or I'm going to go out, I'm going to walk in the sand barefoot and stuff like that. You're yes. helping to stabilize and move those muscles, but also free the foot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, the foot is where the whole body 
obeys. That's you where know? it begins. It's That's where, where begins. you take all yeah. your force. And if you have ever looked at a running <clears throat> shoe, if you go to a, a shoe store and you look at their section of running shoes, if you look at the toe box of a running shoe, it tends to be much larger to allow for your toes to spread out, to be able to feel the ground and to allow for your muscles and your tissues down there to expand and to contract. Um, because when feet get warm, when muscles get warm, there is movement there. They're not necessarily staying the exact same size all day. That's why we have adjustable waistbands on pants. So good. <laughs> That's why we can adjust our belts, right? We don't stay exactly the same all the time. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some move and some play there to um, allow your foot to articulate with the ground well. Um, so that's why they allow for that extra space. But most shoes are not like that. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is just rather than trying to reinvent the wheel or have something that keeps us indoors or keeps mm -hmm. us away from what we were always destined to be a part of, which is nature, just go outside. Yeah. Spend time outdoors. Exercise Absolutely. barefoot. Do those different types of things. And you don't have to. I mean, it saves you money because <laughs> nature is free. Thank yes. goodness. You know, uh, fresh air is free and so is the sun. So go out there and take time there. A lot of times there are some things that we can do. So aside from saying I'm going to exercise outdoors, spending time outdoors, things like fishing, mm -hmm. gardening. Uh, this is a great time for uh, the plant moms and plant dads out there that people yes. talk about, you know, um, <laughs> taking time to, I think during the winter time, a lot of people buy plants and they keep them indoors mm -hmm. and they help, it helps them to uh, gain responsibility and build some responsibility of caring for things. And well, boost now, their mood. Exactly. Now you can take it outdoors mm -hmm. and really see the benefit and the fruits of your labor, you know? Yes. And if you have kids, get your kids involved. Take them outside with you. Teach them to garden. You know, cultivate those activities from a young age, and they're much more likely to be comfortable doing them as they grow older. Yeah. Increase your social gatherings as well. Mm -hmm. You know, do things like golfing. Uh, group outdoor classes are really, really big. Danny's a great group outdoor instructor or group exercise instructor. Yes, yeah. But you have mentioned how sometimes you'll take your groups outdoors and there's a greater benefit to spending maybe that not brisk morning but that maybe like let's say that 10 a.m time where the sun is not at its hottest but you still get the cool breeze of the morning going through your day you really feel a difference in exercising there versus being in a studio and doing your stretches or doing yes, different types absolutely. of dances i you used know? to take um my my breast cancer yoga class that i used to take uh, i would take those ladies outside um, sometimes in the evenings. And, you know, if we had someone who was a little less mobile, maybe we'd take a chair out for them um, and make sure we had even ground so that they could balance a little bit more easily. But um, they saw such a great change in their practice, I think, being outside. And every single person would always comment every time we did it outside, when are we going to do this again? This felt so great. I was able to sync up with my breathing a little bit more, you know, feeling the breeze was really helpful for me to focus and stay centered um, and work through my stretches. So that was just such a valuable experience, I think, for all involved. Um, but especially with COVID-19, I know we're going to say it again. I'm sorry we brought it up again. Um, in 2020, we did that a lot with some of my group fitness classes as well. We would set up um, like a hotspot and take a virtual class literally in a parking lot. There's one near my house, um, like a school parking lot. And when school was out in the summer, we would get people together on a Saturday morning and we would do our dance fitness class outside, or we'd throw some weights in our trunk and we'd get together and we'd just do a couple circuits together so that we could be distanced and feel safe, but also still be able to be together and have that community. So it was really wonderful. It is good. That's very good to hear. I mean, especially because people need that, you mm -hmm. know, it's one thing to kind of gather in a space, but it's another thing to kind of gather outdoors. There is a certain, there's a certain mood that seems to come with it. Yeah. And you know. it's easier, you know, mm -hmm. if you're at a gym or you're at work and you're trying to get a group together to do something, you have to run a space, you know, you have to do X, Y, Z things to make sure you're not encroaching on anyone else's space and you're being respectful. And yeah, maybe if you're outdoors, you need to reserve a park shelter for something, mm -hmm. you know, that exists too, but there tends to be more freedom when you're Absolutely. outside to be able to gather in larger groups. Yeah. Take and take the time to do an activity that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. don't force yourself to do something that is not fun for you. We talked oh, about yeah. this before, you know, at recess, as soon as the kids go outside and they just take off in their different directions, they're going to what they enjoy. Yeah. So in the same way as an adult, young adult, old adult, find what works for you. If you enjoy fishing, go fishing. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy walking, 
go walking. Or if you enjoy just sitting and relaxing, maybe doing some stretches and things like that, that's very okay as well. You just don't yes. have to feel like, oh, exercise, I got to put in 30 minutes of high intensity or moderate intensity. You know, you're following the rubric mm -hmm. to where the benefits of the green exercise are no longer there. You lose the joy. You lose and, the joy. And we've discussed that too. I mean, if you still really enjoy swinging on the swings at the park, go swing on the park. Mm -hmm. You Just because you're an adult doesn't mean we have to suck the fun out of it. Yeah. Like you can still find enjoyment in those little things. I think that's so important. I hate running. Okay. I am not going to make myself go run. I despise it. My body doesn't like it. I have the feet of an 85 year old woman. They don't enjoy running. So it's about finding the stuff that you like that you can also do outdoors, right? Don't push yourself to do stuff you hate. You will never do it again. Mm -hmm. And you'll create a really, really negative outlook on your exercise outside. That's it's not the simplicity want. of it all at the end of the day, yeah. you know, just keeping yourself comfortable. And that's the, that's one of the biggest things that I noticed uh, when we looked at green exercise is green exercise is for the sake of being comfortable. Yes. Now, yes, sometimes exercise requires being a little bit uncomfortable, but green exercise is so necessary, especially in days where mental health is uh, kind of at the forefront where people are struggling and when people are um, in ruts and they're not able to get to a gym or they're not able to motivate themselves to exercise simply because of the rut that they're in. Well, mm -hmm. with green exercise, you're benefiting from the exercise component from maybe a lower stimulus, but you're not putting yourself in a place where you're exercising out of punishment or out of fear or whatever. You're literally just going outdoors to benefit. That's, mm -hmm. that's solely it, you know? Yeah. Now, obviously you don't, your exercise may not be at an industrial park. You may, but if you can find yourself. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's a great way to take time and find an arboretum near you or find yeah. a beach. Find a place that is heavy with nature, a little bit away from everyday life, you know, and it, and it could Variation. be just being outside in your own yard, but taking time to be, as we talk about being present in the moment and being able to just benefit from your breathing, benefit from fresh air, sunlight. And there are aspects of that as well. You can look into seeing how uh, certain times of day are beneficial for sunlight exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have different uh, hues. You know, a darker hued person can probably be in the sun a little bit longer or at uh, outside at a time of day when the sun is at its most intense. Maybe a person with a lighter hue, not as long in the sun or just the timing of the day when the sun is maybe a little bit further away, you know? Yes. So taking inventory of those types of things to get the full health benefit of it as well. Because we and do make need sure you're protected. Wear your SPF. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so as we come into these warmer months, we just want to make sure that we let people know exercise is important, mm -hmm. being outdoors is important, and we work together with the environment in order to benefit ourselves, but also benefit the environment. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Allow yourself to be exposed to that variability, you know, to go somewhere new, to try something different, to experience differences in elevation in in the types of surfaces that we're walking on, mm -hmm. um, maybe in the people that we communicate with when we're outside. Absolutely. A lot it of could growth. be something small like walking in the morning. Some people yeah. do that or walking in the evening, whatever the case may be. But yes. Maybe you'll get to know your neighbors. Maybe you don't want to get to know your neighbors, but maybe you will and it'll be great. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, Danny, thank you for joining me and joining us today, folks, for our talk on green exercise. Hopefully you learned something new and something on the importance of the simplicity of exercise and being outdoors with activity. Absolutely. We hope this encourages you to get out and try something new and we hope that it brings you joy. I'm Danny Andreka. And I'm Darren Rayner. We'll see you next time. Be well. <laughs>